Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crashy and today we're going to be diving into an updated tier list with the release of Countess. So Countess brought some balance changes. I wanted to dive into an updated tier list, but I'd like to give myself a little bit of time and to digest the patch, the changes, the item changes, the balance changes, and let's go ahead and dive into it. So we have our, what, 21 heroes now, and let's go on ahead and uh, see what's going on. So first and foremost, we have Countess. She is uh, absolutely an S tier in my opinion. Now with a video like this, I do like to give some explanations. So let me go ahead and give my thoughts. This character is S tier mid. It can off lane, sure. It can jungle, not very well. It, it, it just can do it like most characters in the game can. But this character in mid is crazy. It is an anti-mage, like burst assassin. You have to kind of take it a little slow in the early game, and then you just start building up, and that's where you take over. You hard roam, you get super fed, you just, this character just dominates, absolutely dominates in the meta, in my opinion, and is just absolutely an S tier, <laughs> like no question to me. Uh, just absolutely ridiculous hero. And uh, yeah, it's, it's best in mid lane. I think the off lane role should still be like tanks and bruisers mostly, um, and the jungle role you just need a little bit better clear for jungle to be a little bit more consistent and, and have a bit more of a presence uh, but it can jungle it can offlane but it's a mid laner it really is a mid laner and i think that it is uh the best mid laner if not um something that's so ridiculously scaling into late game it, it's really really crazy all right uh, i like to cover the s tiers too for whatever reason so that's kind of where i'm at right now uh, second s tier in my opinion is still grux i mean grux slipped under this patch with no changes and the funny thing is, is my opinion on Grux has actually changed quite a bit. Um, it, it's an it's an S tier off laner. I, I think that it's decent in jungle, but when it's so strong in the off lane, and when off lane is just such a, a really like self sufficient kind of like isolated role, you want the best thing there possible so you can try to win that lane. And Grux just absolutely dominates that lane. I'm gonna be honest. I've played a decent amount of off lane. And I, I could be wrong. It could be the people I'm playing against, but there's really like nothing that beats Grux. Um, I think that you can do something kind of interesting where you put like a ranged character to try to counter Grux to poke him out so you don't have to like full engage it. But anything that's like a standard off laner versus Grux is very, very hard uh, to deal with if it's not just another Grux, because then it's just Grux v Grux mirror match. But um, so outside of like kind of like intentionally like say picking like um like, i don't know like a gideon or a howitzer to go against it or like a murdoch against it or something which then affects the team comp specifically um grux just absolutely dominates off lane like i said i think it's a pretty solid jungler as well but it is a dominant dominant off lane and i think it definitely deserves that respect um now i'm thinking last but not least because i don't want to i don't want to flood the s tiers too much is richter this is the support of the game listen to me he's not a jungler he's not an off laner he's not a mid he's a support you can throw him in other roles if you'd like of course because that's what we're kind of all doing experimenting with the game this character is the support of the game he is ridiculous he's so dominant he's a tank he has um you know a hook like a hook into silence into ultimate combo he basically wins team fights this character is absolutely crazy and in fact um I, I think all three of these characters need nerfs for what it's worth i think that countess should probably do a slight bit less damage uh slightly i think grox needs to do a slight bit less damage and honestly i think that richter should probably do a slight bit less damage and i mean slightly they don't need crazy nerfs but that's just my opinion on the current state of the S tier, so <laughs> definitely where I'm at right now. Let's go ahead and drop to the other side of the tier list and talk about a, a not so great pick in my personal opinion. And uh, unfortunately for Fang Mao, he's been bugged, so I haven't really been able to play it in a while, but my opinion of this hero just really hasn't changed. So we haven't had Fang Mao in the game for a little bit now just because of a bug. I'm not really sure what it is, but the character's been disabled for a bit, so if you're not familiar. Um, the problem with this character is that it just doesn't really fit the meta in any particular position now you have to assume that it's best in either jungle or off lane um, but based on some picks that are coming up it definitely doesn't outperform really too too much in the jungle for some of the higher tier picks and it definitely doesn't outperform the off lane um of and i'll just throw it out there of steel which we'll go ahead and put an a tier steel or grux in the off lane 
Um, so Fang Mao really, really struggling. And keep in mind, this tier list is its relative strength. D tier doesn't mean useless or completely bad or never worth picking. It's relative strength. If something's at the top, something's got to be at the bottom, right? So try to understand the structure of a tier list for me on that one. All right. Speaking of A tier, we did put Steel there. Steel is crazy. The only reason Steel's not S tier is because I think that Steel kind of loses the matchup to Grux. And again, I need to see two skilled players play that matchup, or I need to play against somebody in that matchup to really feel it out. I, I just think that he kind of loses, um, and they both skill into late game well. So it's like, which one is more valuable to have? Um, they're both insanely valuable to have going into a late game, but Steel is crazy. He's like maybe a fraction of a hair away from S tier because he just has so much CC, so much disruption, and he does good damage with like a full tank build. So Steel is absolutely insane. I think you definitely cannot sleep on Steel. He is very, very strong. All right, let's move into, say, a uh, mid laner. Let's go ahead and throw Howitzer in the A tier. Howitzer, outside of Countess, I think Howitzer is probably the best mid laner in the game. Um, he just has ridiculous range. Crazy burst is decently self-sufficient with his mine and his ability to, to move around, get off the ground with his ultimate, and just pr provide so much area denial um, with like the like the bomb field, mine field, I guess. He's got like his satchel charge and then mine field, so I should say it like the right way. Um, so he's got like his satchel charge for self-sufficiency uh, in mobility, and then he's got area denial, which is really really good for holding chokes or whenever a team's trying to initiate a fight. You can do so, and they do so much damage. If you ever ran through a full mine field, it does so much damage. Howitzer is absolutely. Um, um, just an insane pick. All right, next on the list is gotta be Kalari for jungle. Kalari is crazy. This character is the character that if dominating early game, game is over. Like it's the stealth is is really really unforgiving for the enemy team um and it, it forces you to put wards in places that you may not want to ward or to, to burn wards and then you you have your ward cooldown is being impacted by that um very just very very strong jungler um, there's a couple of builds that i like for this hero so there, there's some versatility in the play style and it's just insanely insanely strong all right, next in the A tier, and I have to put it up here, is also Gideon. I think that Gideon, I'm just gonna organize it based, on, there's no reason I did that, I just OCD, I wanna put them together. Um, Gideon in the A tier feels good to me. Gideon is really, really self-sufficient because of its little portal, and it's hard to gank, and that makes um, like really impacting the mid lane as like a jungler or as another uh, mid laner a little bit tough. And Gideon also has crazy clear, which gives him the ability to roam. So Gideon feels like another just really, really solid pick in the mid lane, and then provides a really, really good team fight. Now, here's the thing with Gideon. Yes, his ult can be interrupted, and yes, you can coordinate to stop that ultimate, but even like a couple seconds of that, even like a little bit of influence, or even just the pull to have to deal with Gideon's ult, provides so much value to your team Team at the like at the start of a fight um, especially if you can like break a fight by dancing throwing some cooldowns then jumping in as opposed to like being the initiator with Gideon uh, so I, I think that Gideon just brings a lot to the table in terms of team fighting in terms of actual laning phase in terms of self-sufficiency uh, that I definitely think that this hero is pretty insane all right let's jump to the 80 carries and I, I gotta be honest with you this is just where I'm at now and my opinion was this so um we have Ash, Ash, we have Sparrow. I keep calling her Ash because she's a bow user. Really, really annoying. We have Sparrow, we have Murdoch, and we have Drongo. This was my opinion recently. I just feel like Sparrow and Drongo are just a little bit above Murdoch until I started playing against more and better and increasingly skilled Murdochs. And now I'm back to this. I just feel like they're all so good and they're good at different things. Drongo is like a little bit more self-sustaining and brings a silence which can really mess up hunt smite stealing for objectives and can mess up team fights. Sparrow is just so much shred with the steroid, just just ripping through targets and it's just really really strong. And then Murdoch, dude, honestly the traps, the combination of the traps and the cross map ultimate makes me hate Murdoch. Like I always get killed uh, from him cross map whenever I'm trying to get out of a fight and I'm just walking away and, and you know he's there, like, you know he's got it, but like what are you supposed to do? Not run away when you're dying? And you have like this Richter hook into trap combo that people are doing, which is really, really oppressive and annoying. Um, it, it, dude, they're just all so good. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below about the 80 carries and the current state of 80 carries, but they are so incredibly good and it's really, 
really hard to deal with. All right. Let's touch on another mid laner, Faye. Faye is gonna go into the B tier for me. Now here's the thing with Faye. Faye gets absolutely ridiculous, but I think that the early game is not nearly as strong or as reliable as say like Gideon Howitzer. And in some ways, I think that Faye is actually better than Gideon, but it's like that self-sufficiency in the laning phase that slightly puts Gideon ahead of her for me. And, and realistically, we're talking like, if I could put Faye on the line, like right here, I would, uh, because it's so, so close, but I just want to fill out the tier list a little bit more. So I'm slightly bumping Faye down just a little bit um, to the B tier, but she's at the tippity tippity top of the B tier. She's insane, does crazy damage, um, brings a lot of CC to team fights, and can be very, very strong. So definitely don't sleep on Faye, um, but that's kind of where I want to put her for now. Uh, I think that she's very incredible though, and uh, definitely something that I want to explore more in five stacks and see like what kind of comp we can build around the Fey, or like what what specific combos we can do with the Fey, because I think that there definitely could be something to this. All right, let's go back down to the D tier. Unfortunately for Muriel, uh, I just don't feel her impact. Here's the thing, she she's an ultimate, and that ultimate is honestly pretty, pretty awesome and can definitely be impactful, but outside of that, it just doesn't feel like she does enough. Her dome shield's pretty decent, um, but she just doesn't provide enough. And honestly, it's going to be kind of the same thing theme with most supports because Richter exists right now. And so it's relative strength again, uh, but she just doesn't quite get the job done uh, in any capacity compared to some of the other supports. So unfortunately for Muriel, I got to put her a little bit lower on the tier list. And um, yeah, doesn't feel super great, but that's kind of where I'm putting her for now. Crunch, I got to be honest, I'm struggling with a little bit. I want to put him A tier, but I, I don't think he's, since the nerf, he doesn't feel like he's quite performing as well to me, but he's still a good offlaner and, and a good jungler, but I think I kind of want to pull a Fey and put him tip, tip, top B tier, and it's just because I don't want to overly stack the A tier. I don't think he's as good a jungler as Kalari. I don't think he's as good as jungler as, um, well, I guess we'll get it out of the way, as Chimera. I think Chimera is insane. I hear so many opinions about Chimera is not actually very good or, and, and my original thought was, oh, this, this character is going to get shut down in team play. I was wrong about that in my opinion. Um, I think Chimera is like the like core go-to jungler in the game right now. Truly. It, it, he, he provides so much pressure just because of the fact that he can constantly farm. He doesn't really need to ever base. He can't, once he does and starts getting items, then he becomes a menace and, and hard pressures Fang Tooth. He demands respect and attention, and he's got a, amazing ganks and, and, and good damage and an amazing kit, and I just think that Chimera is probably way better than most people give him credit for. Definitely in the upper echelons of the jungle world. Can't play him anywhere else, you just can't. Um, but Chimera is very, very strong. And I think he's slightly beating out Crunch. And again, Crunch is, it, I'm pulling a Fey on this one. He's tip, tip, top of the B tier because Crunch is still crazy strong. And if, if a Crunch gets fed, then it's just like game over. Uh, but yeah, I think that Chimera is surprisingly just, and again, surprisingly to me, so incredible in the jungle role and definitely deserves uh, some respect. All right, Decker, as far as Decker support goes, I kind of think she's the next best support. Um, like if Richter wasn't tanky or if Richter didn't exist, Decker would probably be the best support in the game. Um, Decker feels incredible. She's got so much CC and she brings so much disruption to a team fight. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Decker is a phenomenal support. So if you're not into Richter and you don't, you know, you want to play a support, then I think that Decker is a phenomenal option. Uh, Narbash to me is a weird one. He, he's he's good, but you can't quite get him tanky in the support role. And I honestly think he's a really solid offlaner. If you haven't seen it, he's actually a pretty decent offlaner that you can actually get a little bit tankier and then scale into late game and then have all the disruption and tankiness just because he got offlane. But he loses the offlane early and needs a little bit of help. So um, he seems like solid to me, uh, but he's not the best, right? He's just... He's just not the best, and it's it's a little bit rough uh, to play him. So Narbash is, is cool. He brings some awesome healing, move speed, and like a good ultimate to the table. But honestly, his ultimate being like interruptible and like like you can just ruin it. That kind of sucks. So you got to be careful with that. And um, yeah, that's my thoughts on Narbash right now. That's my thoughts on Narbash right now. Um, I almost, I honestly almost want to pull him down to C tier because I just don't really see him getting picked. Um, that much yeah 
Uh, gadget, I'm going to put in the C tier. Again, it's relative strength. I don't really think Gadget's terrible, uh, but I don't think it, it provides nearly as much strength to a team that Faye does, and it's definitely nowhere near the same impact that Howitzer, Gideon, or Countess have in the mid lane. Howitzer just is like a really, really strong laning phase and then can be annoying in team fights, but I honestly never see like uh i personally never feel like i see a gadget in like late game team fights that's just completely chunking or or doing or so much area denial that it's unmanageable and i don't know i just i i, I haven't seen anything that impresses me when it comes to gadget and that's just kind of how i feel about it uh lieutenant bellica i think is pretty solid b tier whether it's mid lane which i think is e extremely exploitable because they're they're easily gankable um, but whether it's mid lane or support they're pretty annoying uh i don't think that they they stand out too much above the rest of the supports or the mids uh, but they're like middle of the pack solid strong to me i think bellica feels pretty pretty damn solid Rampage, however, is incredibly strong. I think the the three main junglers of the game to me are Kalari, Rampage, and Chimera. That's just how it feels. Um, again, you can jungle Grux, but I think he's just best in offlane. But like the three core junglers of Predecessor feel like Kalari, Rampage, Chimera. Rampage is super tanky, brings tons of C2C to the table, and actually does good damage. It's weird. It's really, really weird. And Severog, I'm in a weird spot with. I kind of want to put him C tier just because he he's a little bit rough to play. Uh, and I'll explain why in a second. But I think he's kind of like B tier, like a little bit lower B tier. The thing with Severog is it, it makes perfect sense if you think about it. He's really, really weak early and then he gets ridiculously strong late. So you have to deal with that. And that that can be tough whenever you're facing something like a Grux, who's just kind of like flatline consistently strong throughout the game. Um, but falling behind on Severog can be pretty detrimental. So... I don't know. Friends, I'd love to hear your thoughts on a tier list like this. Again, Severog for me is like here, here. Narbash is like here, here. Something like this. Um, but the majority of the cast is actually pretty damn strong. And, and I know that y'all are going to want me to put some respect on some of y'all's people's names. Uh, but this is just what I'm feeling and thinking. So drop a like on this video. Subscribe for future predecessor content. I would definitely appreciate that. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, be sure to be kind of one Tell someone you love them. And I'll see you on the next video.